welcome back. This is 101 on Plus TV Africa. Now joining us via Skype to look at the situation in South Africa as it affects entrepreneurs is Don Lovo. Don is the founder and CEO of Entrepreneur Blueprints Africa. He was recognized on the Forbes 30 on the 30 class of 2019. He's passionate about entrepreneurship. And this has led him to co-founding and managing other businesses in different sectors, such as real estate, petroleum, and logistics. Hello, Don. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay. So how would you assess the situation in South Africa? Look, um, on my personal point of view, and actually what's happening right now, the South African economy has hit very, very uh, low because... Our rand to dollar was at um, 14 rand before this started. Now it's sitting at 19 rand to the U.S. dollar. But um, the SMMEs, the blue chip companies, they, we are all feeling the pressure right now. And over and above everything, I still need to say that the president is doing his best. And we are actually handling the situation quite good in South Africa. Even the WHO has commended South Africa on the great work it has done. In, in regards to this COVID-19 case. So how would you rate the level of compliance on the lockdown order? Are citizens complying? Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would definitely say that um, 7, I'd comfortably say 7 out of 10 uh, people are complying. And all rules and situations have been put in place by the Minister of Police and all the other organizations. So people are taking this to heart. People are understanding what's at stake. And more than anything, we we doing our utmost best to uphold and um, stand hand in hand with our president's orders uh, to stay stay indoors under lockdown. Okay, let's talk business and how it's affecting you as a business person. How would you say this um, lockdown and the pandemic has hit South African business owners? Um, on, on a personal note, I've, I've been fortunate to be more, in more than one company. And um, I think with over the years, before I even started being in business and right up till now, this will be the first time actually seeing uh, uh, why uh, the whole world actually in a standstill. You see, the engineering sector is on hold, the, uh, the printing sector is on hold. But the, the companies that are thriving now would be your transport companies, would be your medical companies, would be your food companies. And with all that being said, um, the bare minimum of, uh, of companies, if, you, if you're looking at um, the, the, the people on the ground, we, on the African continent as a whole, we're still struggling with uh, food security, we're still st struggling with affordable health care, we're still slightly str struggling with uh, shelter as well. But I need to commend all the presidents and what they've done so far. They have done their utmost best. And it's up to us South Africans and up to us Africans to actually do our part as well in this pandemic. Okay, some entrepreneurs pride themselves as being able to see opportunities even in situations like this. Would you say the same for yourself? I would most definitely say so for myself. And uh, funny you asked that question because about a week ago I had a conversation with a friend of mine from Kenya. And uh, I posed a question, also he answered the very same question. I asked him, look, it's either you sink or swim. But just understand that if you do happen to sink, there's a foreign company that's going to come in, do the services that you fail to, to, to do, and the money will leave the community. The money that's supposed to stay in the country has now left, leaving the country much poorer. So that is something that you need to now take upon yourself and decide that, are you going to take part? How are you going to do it? And um, that, that's the question I think I'll pose to everyone else out there in the sense of if you do take part, just understand that you'll still be keeping the money in the country. And over above that, I'm actually quite saddened by some of the people that have taken advantage in a very wrong way in the sense of here in South Africa, I'll speak from a South African perspective, here in South Africa we found some priests um, actually opening online churches and charging people to, to actually take part in this, uh, so some ridiculous sums. So I'd actually hope and wish that the South African government can take the very same approach the Botswana government took um, to closing down such people. So that's what I'd say. You take it and you do it the right thing with it. Okay, so if and when these opportunities are identified, how would you say it is easy to navigate the business space? Um... 
it's never easy to navigate the business space. But if you ever take part in such such an industry, you need to find yourself seeing that you don't have knowledge about uh, the, the the industries. Always try and partner yourself up with someone that has more knowledge than you, so you don't burn your fingers in this process. And you'd rather work with someone that has already been in that field, so it better educates you in the process. So that's how I thought about doing this. Yeah, there is a mindset shift caused by the ongoing pandemic. For some, um, it is fueling their creativity, and for others, it may be distorting their perspective on life. Now, as, a, as an owner of a business who have to manage people, how do you advise people handle um, human capital in businesses? You know, before the owner actually even takes part in this, I think people are now at home sitting and thinking that, why does my self worth to the company? People start questioning themselves. But over and above everything, uh, I honestly feel that it's, it is a, it's, it's crucial that people actually keep a positive mindset and keep a, a, a focused vision for the companies going forward. So that would be my best advice to everyone. So are there any measures put in, by, uh, put in place by South African government to support business owners? Yes, yes, they are. From the UIF funds, from the um, financial aids that have been put in place for small, uh, for small companies, up to the blue chip companies, actually. And um, look, not only the South African government has taken part in this, but such families as the Mutipa family, the Oppenheimers, and the uh, Rupert families, and some of the social lights of South Africa have taken part in this and have contributed to the solidarity funds. So everyone is actually taking part in this. And from our side, as a family, from a global family, we've, we've set aside a million rand to help assist the uh, families, 100 families towards until the end of this um, pandemic that we're facing as a country. Mm. And so finally... Yes, the government has done the best and open up everything. Like I always feel that... It's not only the government's duty to take care of the country, but it's also our duty as entrepreneurs, as, as fellow South Africans, as fellow Africans, to assist each other where we can. So what do you expect to see as South Africa approaches ease of lockdown as announced by the president? You know, uh, the, the speech comes right after Ghana has actually um, uplifted its, its um, ease on the lockdown. And not that Ghana was actually one of the few African countries to gain independence. So now it's actually the first country in Africa to uplift this. So <laughs> it, it's quite interesting when you think about it. But what we're expecting is that all correct procedures need still need to be followed. So the wearing of masks, the basics, the wearing of masks, the washing of hands, the social distancing, and open up of everything. We, we look forward to the South African economy slowly but surely picking up again. Because sometimes in order to go up, we need to go down again. And we, we slowly and hopefully, we believe that the whole country will come back stronger and everything will be well. Thank you for your time, Don. And I appreciate it. Take care. All right, do stay safe. It's been an interesting conversation on this episode with Adenike Ogunlesi and Don Ndlovo. To catch up on this conversation, do visit our YouTube channel, Aplos TV Africa, and of course, do subscribe. My name is Elsie Godwin. Thank you for watching and do stay safe.